Hello everyone, Sir Monkey Suit Azabi here, back again with Kuroko no Basket. We are on episode 10 of episode, no, of season 1, not episode 1, uh, episode 10 of season 1. And in the last episode, we continued the match with Seho, uh, the semi-finals of the prelims, and uh, we are a bit behind uh, in terms of points to Seho. Um, you know, we were level at one point when we were, I think, 1919, um, and now we're like, I think they have like 56 and we're at 48, something like that, but they've, they've increased the gap uh, as the... Uh, only the second years have been in play um, as they took off Kagami and Kuroko uh, in the first quarter. Because, um, I mean, they were planning on doing it anyway to conserve their energy for the Shotoko match had they got through. Uh, because obviously it's being played in the same day. But, um, you know, mainly with Kagami, it was because he was reaching five fouls. He'd been on his fourth. And I still don't know the rules in terms of what would have happened if Kagami had given the... Uh, you know the fifth foul really other than a free throw and you know i guess um kagami being disqualified for the rest of the match but they were planning on taking him out and not putting him back on anyway so it, it kind of would have been a, just a thing of like well they got a free throw i suppose but you know if we're going to take him off and we're going to take him off like at the end of the first quarter might as well just take him off now and you know save ourselves getting um some points scored against us because they've got the free throw so yeah, but it doesn't matter. I mean, Kuroko's coming back on now anyway because Kogan, uh, Kogane um, sort of overexerted himself to try and keep the ball in play, ended up tipping over the back of the bench, and he's got like a cushion. Um, bless him. So yeah, Kuroko's decided to come back on um, and sort of get get revenge in a way for uh, Kagami against uh, Sugawa. I mean, even though, like, t to me, I just feel like Sugawa's like, you know, really, in terms of that individual battle, Kagami kind of had his number, and Sugawa was hoping that, you know, it, he was basically betting on the fact that Kagami was starting to get tired, um, you know, and all that. So, so yeah. Um, I mean, other than that, nothing else to really talk about. It's just a battle, uh, and I, I'm kind of excited just to see, um, you know, what Kuroko can do without Kagami on the court. So, uh, so yeah, let's go see what uh, what he can do. But yeah, if you do actually want to go watch the reaction, uh, the link is in the description below the 10-minute version. There's also a link to the full length as well. If you do want that, then the option is there for you. But uh, but yeah, nothing else to really talk about. So we're going to get in episode 10 and see what we get. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, episode 10. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck you, girl. Oh, I love I love sports anime when they, when they because it's just it's like it's like a perfect match that you can have like you know having sports and anime it's it's like it's so like ingenious because you can you can apply everything from a shonen into a sports anime and like have it and it just works. Cause you just you have those moments where it's just like oh my fucking god that was sick that was amazing um and real really like it it was it, it i'll get back to the seho game but like like we'll, we'll just talk about shotoko for a second so it's like they were both playing against each other's um habits and i guess that does relate to the seho game as well but like the idea that they immediately like it was like you know they're setting up this whole thing of like momentum in sports right and that is definitely a thing because it, it affects you like mentally of uh you know like to, to whoever gets the first point can like drastically like you know if you concede a point uh, or points or whatever right like your heads can really go uh you know there, there are occasions where it can like liven up like liven you up a bit and like you do the opposite and you don't let your head drop and you you just go for it even harder to try and get the point back which is what they did here now the interesting thing was when they were trying to get the first point <coughs> um kuroko and kagami brought out the the alley-oop thing that was at the end of the kaiju match the, the practice match um which because it's like they understood that they kind of had to, you know, do their best to get the first point, and that was like their ultimate attack, right? That they have together. But it totally makes sense that, like, because I, I mean, yeah, in the reaction, yeah, I was like, how the fuck did he even anticipate that? But then I remember he did actually watch the end of the Kaiju match, so he would have, 
assumed uh you know what i mean because he understands that as well that like it's about trying to get the first point or whatever that if they were to bring out that midoriya can hang back and wait for that uh, to happen i mean they already set up the fact that they were aware of kuroko right they it wasn't a lack of presence for um midorima's mate right his friend so you know midorima's able to, you can pick him out as well so it's not going to work as effectively in this game but i, I mean yeah so so midorima obviously assuming that that's what they would do to in order to get their first point he can hang back and wait for it to, to occur right so there was that and then immediately you know what i mean that they, they they turn it on and it, it's midorima going for the first point right so he goes for that, that obviously three pointer and okay fine it goes in for a second i was expecting kagami to block it <laughs> you know like because that would have been that would have been insane like if he just jumped up before it got to the hoop and he just smashed it away because i feel like kagami could do i feel like a, a lot of the the players could do that you know i mean that was one of the things i was talking about a few episodes back where um where because the arc of the ball is so high that you can i feel like there is so much time for you to get to, to your hoop and time it so that when you jump before the ball lands in block it you know because i mean that's what like you know basketball players can dunk everything like that i mean If someone's going for like a, a dunk, like the alley oop thing, right at the end of the Kaijo match, for example, like Kise could jump and reach above the hoop, right? I mean, we've seen him dunk, so we know that he can do it, right? So he can do the same blocking it. So theoretically, that's the way to block the shot, unless you're literally up in mid Rima's face. But the thing is, is that the team is almost set up in a way, Shotoku's set up in a way that they allow mid Rima the space. To be able to do to, to be able to take those shots because they know that, that he can just fucking throw it from essentially anywhere like at this point i wouldn't be surprised if he throws it from his own half and just it can go in you know i mean that's the kind of i mean that's i'm expecting that to happen at some point you know but like yeah i mean back to the whole thing of using the opponent's habits against them knowing that midorima when he takes the shot he doesn't even look to see if it goes in he already starts walking away and in a way, like, that, the, the fact that he has that mentality is almost like he, he, he is a bit up his own arse in that regard, you know? Like, he's like, yeah, I haven't missed. But like, you know what I mean? You're walking away, you're keeping your eye off the ball, you know? And, and in a way, it's a bit, you know, he deserved that. You know, because you should have kept your eye on the ball. If you did, you would. This wouldn't have. You know, you wouldn't have been surprised by this. And now they're back in the game. Shotoku are ahead by one point because a dunk is still is just two points, right? It's not three. So you know, but it's only one point. It's just a one point gap. But that you know, they're still in the lead. But I, I just love the fact that it's just like it's a fucking. It's like. It's a team game, but like they, they they focus so much on individual battles because I guess that's really what basketball is a lot of the time. You know, like you need that team dynamic, of course. To it's like you can't just win the match on your own, right? Um, so you you do need that team dynamic, like in order to to push forward and win games and stuff. But generally, like in terms of the the match, it's like you have these like individual like stories in a way that play out between two like you know a, a player and an opposition player because they're just trying to outdo each other in a way you know what i mean and that just kind of builds up over the course of a match i mean that's something that happens in other other um sports as well like in football you know it, not as much as i think it would happen in basketball but because generally in basketball a lot of it is man marking and a lot of the time your mark is you, you stick on that one person for the entire game that happens in football as well but not like it's not as much so but yeah but you'll get those point like you know you'll get those players matched up or whatever and they'll like give it you back a bit more so you know if it's in football and like you know you have this person who 
puts in like a dodgy foul on a guy right slides in takes him out right then all of a sudden that person that that got taken out by the foul it's like a vendetta almost against the other player it's like right well that's it you know what i mean i'm coming back at you and i'm giving you one back and that tends to happen a lot of the time and i feel like in basketball because there's a hell of a lot less players it's only 10 players on a court so the you know you've got your team right like disregard your team you've got five other players that like you know that to choose from and it'd be it's like i guess it's a lot more intimate and therefore it's a lot more allowing for the individual versus individual as opposed to just straight up team versus team but you know but i mean that's just very heavily out there like we can see that you know it's like oh so right you're, you're gonna do that and get points against me like, how dare you turn your back against me right it's like it's, it's great because kirko knew exactly he knew as soon as uh, midorima was taking the shot he ran past kagami to tell him get on your bike fucking run forward because it's going in anyway i'm going to be there under the net when it bounces it's going to it's gonna go right into my hands get straight across the line fucking like just absolutely welly it down the court and the thing is is that he fuck he put so much spin into it he went around like twice just to get that much power <laughs> so that it would it wouldn't drop like it literally just like a bullet damn it's crazy it was awesome though i, lo I love that you know it's making use of the fact that once you cross the line you can go as fast as you want you know what i mean you don't have to wait for a whistle just get across the line fucking welly it down the court that's great but it, it like midorima was totally at fault for that you know what i mean he's been he's so lethargic in the way that he works like because i guess it's just a case of he hasn't come up against anyone that's given him that much of a problem so it, you know he can he, it's like he can take it easy right and he made a mistake in this of taking it easy the thing is i i feel like it's not going to work again like that wouldn't that won't work again i don't think midorima's not turning back around at any point in this game after he's taken the shot he's not he's going to keep an eye on that ball so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes from here on out because like i said i think kuroko's effectiveness isn't nowhere near as effective in this game so you know we'll, we'll we'll see what uh what ends up happening with that but um but yeah i mean that's that's pretty much it for the start of the show toku match um so yeah seho kuroko's pass <laughs> that was insane kuroko was unreal this episode he was fucking out of this world it was like he acted like he was gonna it was like a faint he basically acted like he was gonna hit the ball with his other arm coming around and use that to, to, to pass instead it's like such a you have to be so quick and thinking that as well like you know what i mean Qu very quick thinking to because you're already going for it right you need to just oh it's great and he must have had the vision as well for where hugo was so that that's yeah just really really cool um and he just took him out of the game with that one pass. It was insane. And then obviously giving it to the clutch shooter, perfect timing. You know what I mean for the for the buzzer beater. And then uh, they they end up getting the win. Um, and yeah, we had we had like Kagami in that noticing Kuroko as well from the bench because he hasn't really seen him. Like you know, just outright see what like the amount of work that he actually does do, and how much he essentially takes the opponent out of the game with his passes. Um, you know. So yeah, they end up winning the game, and, and Sugawa, man, it's like, damn, yeah, man, have some fucking grace in losing, you know, like, it, it's like, it just immediately, like, it's like, no, we're the stronger team, you know what I mean, like, why the hell did you just win, and it's like, well, you know, it's the same, do, do you know what it is, though, right, it's like, this because I compare, obviously, this to Haikyuu a lot, now, this is one where the shows differ at least up until now anyway like it's a case of that it's like the animosity of losing kind of stays um stays around like and i, I guess it in a way it is actually realistic because i feel like with high q it's generally it, it comes down to it's like it's always respect after a game and it's always like the, the the show almost makes you feel sorry for the team that's lost even though they were technically the 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 the, op the op they were the opposition team you know what i mean and then i feel like sometimes that that can be lost in haiku you know what i mean like um 
because I guess you get so into the match and you get so into the idea of like, right, well, I don't know, we're going up for revenge against Ayoba Josai, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, because they put so much effort into the, the opposing team, I guess that's what, it, it rallies it up to a, a crescendo at the end. And the climax ends up being like, you know, like, it, it, it is euphoria, like, in a way, for the match itself. But then it's like when the match is gone and it's just, you know, it, it's just their you know the characters and it's like they have to come to terms with the fact that they're lost they all react in different ways and i feel like haikyuu they don't do that they don't have people that have some like like you know like their own personality in regards to it it's not like you know like it's like it's like in haikyuu it's almost like every single person when they lose has grace in losing so I guess in in terms of like you know I like the fact that they they have you know the likes of Suga that that literally just gives them shit. But if I'm going just straight off, you know that's like me thinking about it like in a meta sense. Um, you know like that's me saying that I like the fact that it's it's there. But Suga was a bitch. <laughs> Fuck, it, he's such a bitch. You know what I mean? Like he spends all game giving it all that. You know what I mean, and then and then has a hissy fit when he loses. It was like the same sort of thing with uh, the the Shinkyo captain, right? And I guess to some to a, some like a lesser extent, um, Papa. But the, you know the the idea when they, when they they talk about that, the, you know what I mean? They just talk about how you know how we're clearly going to win, and it's like you know what I mean? You just you keep underestimating them. But I think it was worse for Sugawa because Sugawa was told time and time again, and he was watching the fucking he was watching them, given like giving them a good game, and he was still giving it that, <laughs> and then he has the audacity after losing, to shout out like why you don't deserve that because we're the stronger team. It's like well if you're the stronger team mate you would have won. <laughs> Simple as that. It's not a case of stronger team on paper like. Oh, what? It's Seirin versus Seho. Who's going to win that? You would probably put your money on Seho because of how badly they beat them last year. But it's a case like of on a day-by-day -day basis. This, ma this match in particular doesn't matter about what's happened beforehand. Doesn't matter. This game right now, this individual game that you've just played, you were not the stronger team. You know what I mean? You have to have some fucking grace in, in, you know, in humility and losing. I mean, but yeah, I mean, Sug Sugawa like he he deserves it so much. Proper sadist out the gate, quite underhanded in the, in his way of you know and being you know tactful. But I you know I don't give him that you know because I understand playing a game tactfully in that in that regard. You know what I mean? That you, you use whatever you can to your own advantage. I'm not going to give him shit for that. But the fact is that because he was using that. He was, he was being tactful and everything like that and then has the audacity to come out and say that they weren't even the stronger team is a bit like you know like <laughs> like I just I have to sit back and say that you're a bitch you know and you need to work that shit out you need to calm the fuck down there that's me though um, but like I said I like the fact that you can have those characters in there and it doesn't have to be after every match have people be purely respectful and graceful, you know what I mean? Like, because realistically, there is going to be that one off guy, or, you know, every so often there'll be someone who takes it differently to other people, you know? So, you know. Anyway, yeah, so, I mean, uh, the other thing I want to talk about as well is numbers associated with position. I said it in. Like when I was reacting to it in the like the opening, but I don't know if that will go into the ten minute reaction. So this is just you know for the sake of those people. I was talking about how numbers on their jerseys are they associated with a position or not? Because I've noticed that I think everyone who's a a captain is number four. So I was wondering if that is like if you're the captain, that's your number, or is it asso associated with the position that you play? Because it, again, like bringing up football again, generally it's it's not concrete. Like, you don't necessarily have to have that. But there are certain numbers that are associated with, um, you know, the positions on the pitch. For example, if you're a goalkeeper uh, and you're the main goalkeeper, 
because obviously you, you will have you know goalkeepers on the bench like ready to come on just in case something happens generally the, the main goalkeeper will be number one um you have like right backs and left backs that are generally number two and three um you know and, and when you start getting like up like f like you know up front and forward like this the the up front is generally like uh, you know a number nine is considered very like in high regard is like if you're a number nine you're the one that gets the goals so you know the, 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 there are like associated positions generally in um in terms of uh positions and also i feel like it's like the captain it, it almost works in time with the captain because i think a number four generally a number four in football is like that central midfield position um or uh, sort of like a defensive center midfield position which means that he's in a perfect position almost to overlook everything and you know if you're the captain you're generally it's your job to get everyone like you know on board during the game right so you're you're the one like almost you know you're the one out there shouting for you know people to keep their position everything like that right and from that position it makes sense and i wonder if that is sort of similar in basketball where the number four is the one generally like in position of you know like i guess it, again like it doesn't matter as much for basketball because i feel like there's less people on the court so you know like i, I guess you don't really have a middle position i mean that's the thing they haven't really talked about is it is like certain positions like defense or you know because i guess they're not it's not as i guess it's not as strict for basketball right because it's like you, you're moving it's like you don't have a a cemented block of positions right because you're moving in defense and then offense but i wonder if there is a like a formation in a way that like in defense your position is this and then in offense your position is this i don't know if that is the case or is it, or is it just like move however you want you know but like maybe you have a role so for example like uh, the number four that was on seho's team i was like it seems like he's the one that guards the hoop if he can right if they're coming up for a dunk like he'd be the one to get in the way so i feel like maybe you have a role and you just work around that role but you can go anywhere you want kind of thing i guess that that works for any spot you, you can really go anywhere you want but um i mean for football generally it's considered a good idea that if you're the defending team like if they if the opposing team has the ball your team should get into shape and keep your shape of like whatever formation it is that you're playing you know um and I, I wonder if there's something similar with with basketball to that um but yeah and then i mean the, the last thing i want to talk about as well is the so right so the championship league i don't understand how this has worked because i th i thought I must have completely gotten it wrong because I thought that it was a case of the brackets, everything like that featured all of the blocks, A through D. That's what I thought it was. And then it was a case of like the last three, or the, the top three of, of all of Tokyo in those blocks, those would go through to the inter high. But here, they were saying that you have to win that in order to get to the Championship League. But then... Because I, I thought Shotoko wasn't in the same block. Didn't we see that? Didn't we see like the A block and it wasn't... It didn't have... Oh, man. Although, no, because it would make sense, wouldn't it? Considering how many... Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, you know what? Because the brackets... I remember I remember saying the brackets, and there definitely wasn't, obviously, 300. I remember them saying that there were 300 teams, right? And therefore, they, like, you would have to separate them into four brackets, I suppose. Fuck. That's nuts. So yeah, I don't know where Ascension can, can is then. They clearly just didn't get through this time. Like, they must have been beaten... 
earlier on against Shotoku Waseho, I think. They must have done. Because they weren't in the in the uh, semi-finals. Fuck. I mean, that, that makes this game more... It, it completely throws my theory out the window. Because I thought it was a case of... Well, it still is, isn't it? It's like... Yeah, I just remember like Shotoku basically saying, "We'll see you in the, um, in the prelims," because they were in the same district. But when they were reading out the rules to get to the championship league and stuff, I was like, "Oh, it's four teams, so that means it's basically uh, Shotoku, Seho, Senshinkan, and Seirin." And those four teams, and then the top three of those go through to the inter high, and then you play against the the other um, <sighs> fuck. Yeah, I don't know now. Then I don't know now because I was like, well, in order to play Kaijo, they have to get through, which means that they're going to have to beat Shotoku. But I don't know if that's what I want. You know. I always have this conundrum with sports anime because it's like I try it's like it's like trying to figure out realistically Ge generally I feel like it's easier to figure out a story in a sports anime than it is in any other one like how the matches are going to go based upon where you are in a, in a in a season right and it's a very meta way of looking at it which I kind of hate in a way and it's the reason why I'm I'm generally kind of strict with spoilers and why I don't watch trailers and everything like that because I feel like the littlest thing can open up something in a theory that I have that just makes it like, oh, well, that's going to happen then kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like with sports anime, generally you can just see like a pattern emerges that it's like, right, well, something's been set up here. That means that at this, like, they're setting up that and continuing that story so that it ends at that point and there's a resolution that happens because of what happened back here the thing that they set up was the fact that you know the, the practice match against kaijo was like right well they've set that up so there's gonna have to be revenge at some point but i always had it in my head that no matter what shotoku both shotoku and searing could get through to the inter high um and Seirin could get through even if even if they lost. Because I thought it was a case you go up in the Championship League and you play the other three teams and they they all play each other once and then the top of like the top three of those four go through. And I thought that that's the way that it worked, but now it's just now it's fucked. Now I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know. Because in my head I'm like I don't know if I want Midorima to lose. You you know what I mean? We'll just have to wait and see. But um, but yeah, I mean, that's all I've got. So thank you, everyone, for watching. If you do want to go actually watch episode 11 and 12 right away, you can do by um, becoming an early access to our patron. Uh, it's just $5 a month, and that'll give you access to shows a week early. So you can get episodes 11 and 12 right now over on my Patreon there. Uh, there's also full length if you do want to watch them in full and not just the 10-minute cut version. And there's also other tiers where you can pay to have a show reacted to as well. So if you do want to, you know, have a look at see what those... Uh, uh, tiers offer then you know go go ahead feel free uh, there's also a link to the discord as well so if you want to get yourself over there you can do but that is all i've got for the day so thank you everyone for watching and i'll see you all next time bye bye